Hello and thanks for joining us for another episode of Studio Tech Live. This is episode number 153, recorded on the 9th of September 2014. And if you're watching this live, well done. Apparently some other company has got some announcement event ha happening in Cupertino or somewhere like that. And some of our audience are a little bit distracted by that. I know Vance is, so if you see him glancing away, you know what he's up to. Anyway, we've got a pretty busy show this evening. We're going to be having a quick look at IBC, which starts this Friday. Unfortunately, we're not going to be there. But a lot of the Studio Tech community are, and hopefully they're going to be sharing comments, pictures, and maybe video clips with us. And we'll share those with you over the weekend, perhaps, or at least on next week's show. We're then going to be talking about the S word. Yes, Skype. Now, we're pretty lucky in that we have some Skype TX systems on that we're testing as part of the Skype TAP program. But other people are having problems with Skype because the latest versions, which you now have to use because they're turning off support for the old versions, don't allow you to easily get video into them. So what can you do about it? Well, we're going to be talking to Stephen Pressland about some solutions that he's found. And then we're going to be taking another look at the Blackmagic Studio camera. We looked at this a couple of weeks ago, but we're now going to see it linked up to the ATEM control software, which allows you to control it and make adjustments from the control panel rather than from the camera. So that's it, a busy show today. Now we can bring you Studio Tech Live thanks to the support we get from several companies. And we just like to take a minute to thank them. First of all, I'd like to thank Teradek. Teradek products are, you know, without Teradek products, it would be very difficult for us to do Studio Tech Live in the way we do it. The UK and US studios are linked 24 seven by Teradek Cubes. We use Teradek Bond for near zero latency remote camera connections. We're using Teradek clips on UAVs or for things like, you know, remote monitoring of DSLRs. And over the last few months, we've been using the Teradek Bond 2. This box is now part of our equipment arsenal. And the Bond 2 allows you to bond cellular modems, 3G and 4G modems, to get a video back from a loca remote location. And we're going to be using that and sharing that with you over the next few weeks. So all in all, we really are connected by Teradek. Our thanks to them for their support. Now, the bit of equipment that is the heart of the UK and US studios is a NewTek TriCaster. And the TriCaster is not just a switcher. It allows you to stream, it allows you to record, it allows you to play back videos. It allows you to do lower thirds. You can do animated graphics uh, bugs on some of the professional models. Without the TriCaster, it would make our job a lot harder here at Studio Tech TV. So we'd like to thank New Tech for their continued support of Studio Tech Live. And finally, I want to thank BitGravity. BitGravity provide us the bandwidth to stream Studio Tech Live each and every week. BitGravity provides the bandwidth for all the TTFN TV live streams. We continue to receive very positive comments on the quality of the live video, and this combined with outstanding service and support makes BitGravity a great company to work with. So if you're looking for someone to help with your live streaming requirements, check BitGravity out at www.bitgravity.com. Hello and welcome again. A very busy show, so let's get right into it. But just want to remind you about a couple of things before we do that. And the first is that our website that allows you to you know, sell bits of kit or to find bits of video kit. And that's ads.studiotech.tv. And uh, you can register on that site. It's free of charge. We don't make any money out of it. It's been a little bit quiet recently, but a lot of people have sold equipment through it. So it is well worth checking out. And it's also well worth listing items for sale because you know, people who watch the show are interested in bits of video equipment. And here on the laptop screen, I just, I'm just showing the site. And you can see there's a complete studio setup. There's a Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio, there's a Matrox MX02. And there's uh, just three items at the moment, because a lot of them has dropped off or been sold. So if you have any items that you want to sell, you need to register. There's a little code down here, the registration code. 
and just enter your items. It really does work. We've sold quite a lot through it. We also want to remind people about our Patreon site. Over the last few years, people have said, how can we support you? You know, have you got a donations button? And, and we haven't really done much about that. So after a, a viewers or few, several viewers suggested, why not get a Patreon site? That's exactly what we have done. And uh, you can find it by following this link here. What Patreon is, is a way that you can say, pay us $5 a month or $10 a month or whatever. We have a, a, you know, several people who are being very generous indeed, but you know, not a lot of people have uh, signed up to it, which is surprising. So. Now, if you get some value out of watching this show, why don't you just, you know, donate $5 a month or whatever just to help us with the running costs? Because even with our advertisers, you know, this isn't a show that makes any money for anybody who is involved in it, I can assure you of that. So we'd appreciate any support that you might like to give us. All right, let's get on with the show. Lots to do, lots of people to talk to. And the first person to talk to is the man who is back behind the glass, the man who is back in the studio after being absent with leave last week, and that is Peter. Peter, thanks for uh, joining us again this week. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. It's nice to be back. See, I forgot where all the buttons are, the, the mute button. But uh, yes, yeah, nice to be back. And uh, no, nothing much has changed apart from my memory, obviously, and uh, a few buttons to press. So uh, anyway, without more ado, I see in the show notes that we go back to uh, our other long-time regular. Nice to see you again, Mr. Willis. Certainly. Glad to be here as always. And I'm going to try to remember my mute switch. It's very uh, tough to remember sometimes. So chat room, we um, had someone ask if we were actually going to sell Peter there on the uh, ads.studiotech.tv. And um, not yet. Uh, so he's, he's not available for sale yet. So you will not, you will not find him in the ad section. Um, Didn't at least not yet. Yeah, I'm not sure that we would yeah. uh, actually get very much for him. This is the problem, Vance. <laughs> well, Ooh. see, you Ooh. can say that, Mark, but see, I, I mean, you know, you've got a bulletproof <laughs> glass or something between, you know, just you as and well. Peter. Just as well. Um, yes. I have the mute button. But, but Peter has a button. Yeah, yes, he has mute button and a button he can press, and my video just starts getting all snowy and, and everything. So I was going to be easy on what I said, but uh, I have yeah, this, he may be tossing something through the studio window. I, I have the button mark black <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway Vance great to uh, great to see you we haven't actually talked very much normally we talk almost every day from the, from the studios but I've been out working on a, on a project uh, almost uh, every day for the last couple of weeks and uh, we'll continue to do that for a, a little while so it's good to uh, it's good to see you um, right but let's get in the show so we don't normally cover news uh, that's not going to take too long this evening Vance is it well, you know, we've got, you know, Mark, we, we talked a little bit about, we got uh, th just, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of press releases from IBC, which starts in just a few days. We've had some of the chat room members actually drive by the uh, convention center there and, uh, and said they're, the banners are all uh, plastered over with, uh, you know, with all kinds of tarps and plastic and um, things, that, you know, so you can't see what's going on. So the big unveiling is in a couple of days. And um, unfortunately, as you mentioned in the beginning of the show, uh, we're not going to be there, but a number of the Studio Tech audience will be. So we are looking forward to uh, getting that. Our chat room stays open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And at different hours and times of the day, we do check back in and monitor uh, the chat room. So any, anyone that uh, would like to sign in, check things out, um, drop back out, come back in again, then uh, that would be uh, that would be really really good. So uh, we're looking forward to a lot of the things. I think um, Mark, I don't know what your opinion was, but uh, a lot of things seem to be. Um, I think you said it earlier, revolutionary or uh, you know space aged or uh, you know out of this world or uh, uh, something to that effect. So, um, uh, but on the flip side. I haven't seen a whole lot yet because I think everything's being kept under wraps and we'll see it in a few days. What do you think? I'm not sure there's going to be anything really exciting. I mean, the, 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 they, get, they get me every time. There's this press release that comes up and says, uh, so-and-so is now at the, Europe, the European teleport facility. You know, teleport to me means, you know, beam me up, Scotty. It means, you know, something exciting. But apparently it's just some satellite uplink facility. 
and it's not really a teleport facility at all. Now, as you said, somebody did say that there are some banners up around IBC that are still covered up. So, you know, maybe there will be a few announcements. We haven't heard very much. We know that Skype TX says they've got something exciting to, uh, to talk about. Um, there's, um, you know, Sony have got a big press conference. Now, the Sony press conference is actually being streamed live. And more and more companies are now starting to uh, do this. In fact, and I'm sure, you know, Vance will talk about it in a minute. We've just been watching the Apple uh, keynote with the, some announcement in Cupertino that uh, Vance has been uh, following. And, and we'll, we'll get a quick update from him in a minute on, on that. But not only are they now live streaming it, but they're effectively blogging it themselves. And I think doing a better job than a lot of the bloggers that are there because they had all the images, they had the video clips, they had the quotes all ready to, uh, to blog. So Sony are uh, streaming their press conference live. And I have actually retweeted that uh, at TTFN TV. So if you want to you know, uh, catch up with anything exciting that's happened, do make sure you're following at Vance Willis or me at TTFN TV. And when we come across something, we will tweet it. And that way you can uh, follow the link or you know, find out uh, what is happening. Now, there is one announcement or one release because it was announced at last year's IBC. And, and we are, Vance, I know, is waiting for this as we have mentioned before. So Vance, will we one year later get that software from Blackmagic for the Video Hub? Well, you know, I uh, I started holding my breath, and uh, you know, I did it for first an hour, and then a week, and then a month, and then half a year, and then a year, and you know, and I said after about a year and a half, I'm just going to stop even looking for it. So, if it ever does come available, you know, we've we've seen some, we we've, we've seen it kind of on a computer maybe somewhere, but. Um, you know, I don't know when it's going to come out, Mark. So I would, I would love to see it this year. Uh, it's become a little bit more of a joke with us just because uh, they teased us with it a long time ago and uh, just shelved it or put it on the side of a desk and, and didn't, uh, didn't get it out into the, uh, into the public. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that happening as I have been. But I'm, I, I, my hopes for the Video Hub software um, are way... Uh, on the back burner right this minute. So maybe, maybe, but uh, I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see it, to be honest with you. So this is for everybody, every member of the Studio Tech community who might be going to IBC. Go to the Black Magic stand. Go down normally on the left-hand side of the stand. They have the video hubs. Find a Black Magic person and says, hey, at last year's IBC, you showed a new release of video software, of, of video hub software that allowed you to load and save settings. Is it been released yet? And if they get enough people, maybe that'll have some effect because it would be so useful for us. I mean, there is, I know it's just a little utility and not everybody has video hubs, but if you did, you would know how useful it, uh, it would be. So hey, we will keep you updated on IBC. Do, uh, and obviously on next week's show, we have a couple of people who are uh, uh, at least who have said they're going to send us video clips. If you're going to be there, do, uh, do take some still images or video clips and uh, send in a little report and we'll share them on next week's show. Right, before we w w move on to talking about the S word, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Remember we showed a short, I don't know, 10 minute video of uh, Richard Payne from Holden a few weeks ago about the Panasonic GH4. And uh, we filmed that same shot the same day, a much longer review, it's about 40 minutes long. And hopefully that'll be released in the next couple of days. In fact, I was looking at it earlier today and it is, I, I actually sat back and, and was, I was watching it more than I was editing it. It really is an amazing camera. So that uh, will be Studio Tech 115 and hopefully it'll be out in the next couple of days, certainly in time for uh, the weekend. So keep uh, an eye out for that. And I also wanted just to remind people, because this show, you know, we have, we have pre-show, we have post-show, we have various items, and lots of people have asked us for an index. Well, if you go to the studiotech.tv website, so I've got it on my laptop screen now, and if you actually click on one of the Studio Tech Live episodes, you will uh, you know, go to it and you'll see that there are two, uh, two videos. There's 
The first one is the, where it just says video at the top. That's just the show. That is, you know, from the opening titles to the closing titles. And then we have video with pre-show and, uh, and post-show. And as you can see, the YouTube algorithm for selecting the, the worst possible thumbnail advance worked very well in, uh, in this particular uh, case. I think we probably could get... Uh, Easy now. <laughs> Easy now. Uh, but below that, the bit I wanted to point out, and it is in the sort of a, a, a faint text, is an index. And if you click on any of these, it takes you to the, uh, the particular. So you've got 3D Storm, tri TriCaster portfolio, the uh, PTZ, that's the PTC120. This is from Data Video. We're really looking forward to getting our hands on that camera. So if you click on it, it just takes you to the YouTube video in that, uh, in that point. So there is an index on the website, and we'd very much like to thank uh, Jesper for one of, our, one of the Studio Tech community, who every week uh, for uh, the last three or four months, if maybe longer, has been sending the index into, a, into us, normally within a couple of days. Uh, sometimes if he's busy or away on holiday, it takes a little bit longer, but uh, that index is posted. And I know that might help some people just on going straight to the bit of show, the show that they really want to watch. But of course, you should be watching, uh, watching all of it. So, uh, you know, do check that out. Now, let's talk about the S word. And then we're bringing in our guest in uh, just a uh, moment. But let's just set the scene. Skype have been, I, I don't know, sunsetting might be the, uh, the right word for it, uh, older versions of Skype. And if you try and log into it, in fact, it happened to us today. Um, when we were doing some, uh, some testing earlier, we, um, Peter tried to sign in to uh, an old version of Skype and it wouldn't uh, sign in. You had no luck, Peter, didn't you? It was absolutely, you know, uh, there was just nothing you could do with it. Absolutely nothing. Just didn't get past the login screen. Yeah. And that's because you can't actually log into these older versions. Now, Skype have been good. They are sending out emails. This is an email that I actually received uh, this morning. This is first for one of our, uh, for our Skype 4 ID. And it says, we're now retiring older versions. And it appears that at some point you signed into Skype with one of them. To continue signing into Skype, you'll need to download the latest uh, version and then send you the link. So this is a link that lots of people are getting. And for most users, that is absolutely fine. But if you are using Skype in a, in a podcast or a show or a broadcast of some sort, you want to be able to send video into Skype and not just with a webcam. And a lot of the devices that uh, we have uh, used, such as a Blackmagic devices, uh, we've used the Ultra uh, Studio uh, Mini Recorder, and that was our setup of choice. That no longer works. So people have become frustrated and have been asking us, well, are there any solutions? So with that, I'm going to introduce uh, somebody who's been on the show I think at least a couple of times before, the guy who's responsible for the back end of the many of our uh, online systems, and that's uh, Stephen Preston. Stephen, thanks very much for, uh, for joining. Hi, nice to see you. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, you're, uh, you're very welcome. So, so Stephen, you have um, kindly done some testing uh, for us and, uh, and, uh, and with us, and we are actually connected over, over Skype. Now we're using Skype TX system uh, this end, but we did exactly the same tests earlier with a standard Skype uh, system, except of course you couldn't uh, see our video. But you're now coming full screen to us, um, you know, wide screen uh, over Skype. And I assume that this is, well I know this isn't a webcam you're using. No, so, um, so what we're using here is a Blackmagic uh, ATEM Television Studio. Um, so, uh, if, uh, if I just cut to, to that, you see that we've got a sort of a fairly uh, rudimentary uh, setup with um, similar to some of the ones you've been sending in, with a couple of uh, dual screens and a um, ATEM Television Studio, Ultra Studio 4K, and a Behringer Ultra Curve, um, and uh, very uh, basic setup. But we've got the Television Studio feeding in from a couple of uh, Sony uh, video cameras. And um, that is then being sent out to a Mac 
MacBook Pro Retina um, over USB 3 with the uh, the Madwell um, device, and um, that's being fed by a HDMI uh, input. So I've got a picture here of the um, the little device there um, that uh, comes in two versions: the the HDMI and the SDI. Um, personally, I've just got the uh, HDMI version because it gives me a bit more flexibility with my HDMI cameras if I don't want to do it with the uh, with the studio uh, the mixer setup. But um, but yeah, so that's the uh, that's the setup that's sending you over the latest version of Skype for Mac. So you're using, I think, six point one nine build five. 452, which is, which is today's build. In fact, you know, we, we, yeah. we joked earlier, I said, are you using the latest version? You said, yeah, I've got the latest version. Of course, you check and there's another little tweak and, and so you up, upgraded to the latest version. So this is output from your television studio into the, uh, the Magewell uh, capture dongle, which uh, basically they say is plug and play. I assume it must appear to the operating system. Now, this is on Mac, you're on, on OS X, but we believe it works on, on Windows. So it is on Mac, just make sure I've got that right. Yeah, so it's on Mac, and the, uh, the device is um, plug and play. There's no drivers, no software. What it does is it's using the standard USB uh, video device um, format that a standard webcam would use. But obviously, rather than it sending in a picture that's come off of a tiny uh, little sensor, we're getting a picture that's um, that's coming through from the uh, the, the HD um, television studio through the HDMI. So um, the benefit of that is that uh, from Skype's point of view, it just thinks it's an external webcam, and um, it's also got a few other neat little tricks um, that uh, that help the Skype system get what it asks for. So. Um, with a webcam, they are asking for a particular resolution and frame rate. The, the Majorwell dongle has actually got a uh, transcoder in it. So it's doing all of the scaling and the frame rate conversions in the unit itself. Uh, and I've had a play around with that. Um, and uh, it's actually very, um, very, very clever. So um, where I've, uh, I've used it on a MacBook Air, which you know is very low CPU, it's um, well not low CPU, but for heavy uh, video crunching and scaling and deinterlacing, it you know it will go sort of through the roof on CPU power if I'm using say a um, Blackmagic uh, mini recorder. Um, but uh, but when I'm using this device, there's all the hard work's being done on the on the device, so it's um, it's only then leaving the computer up to, to you know to doing the video compression. For the uh, for the process, so um, yeah, very uh, very good little bit of kit. Um, the trouble with there not being drivers, your software is in complete control of it. The only way that I've been able to um, use it and actually have control over picture size, frame rates, is to write some custom software and to use some software that gives me direct access to the um, to the system. But uh, apart from that, you both you know plug it into Skype. It says. Uh, what it wants out the device, the device gives it to it, and it uh, works as we can see here. It's you know there's no XML hacks, there's no nothing. Fresh install of Skype, uh, latest version, um, just working out the box. All right, so we got a couple of questions that come in, and we've uh, we've shown these devices a couple times. Rob is asking, is this USB two or three? Natively, it's USB three. We can see it's a blue cable, which doesn't always indicate, but a lot of times the internals inside of the USB actually, if it's if it's blue, it tells you it's a three. Um, this does down convert to um, to USB two, but you do you lose some of the um, the actual uh, frame rate and resolution size sizes, Rob. This is also an HDMI version. I have a couple of SDIs and an HDMI. Um, I've gotten mixed results with this uh, here in the U.S., guys. We've got, um, you know, we've got this 5994 um, frame rate and just some crazy stuff. I've not tried it on the latest and greatest version of Skype. I got uh, just a little, you know, tired of this. I, I got like four of those emails from Skype saying, uh, you know, your current version of Skype doesn't work. Is, you know, get ready because you're going to have to get the newest version. And, you know, I, I have not tried this as of, uh, you know, the last week or so to see how it works here in the U.S. Um, but um, it, uh, Rob, you can search on Magewell. It's M-A-G-E-W-E-L-L. -L. 
Um, it's distributed here in the U.S. by about three distributors, and uh, they're little they're little expensive devices, but uh, they work they do work great for exactly what um, Stephen's talking about. That uh, it it does a lot of the heavy the heavy work uh, off of the computers. Uh, control card, so you, you you don't have to do a whole lot, um, but I've I've gotten some mixed results. I'll say both on Windows and Mac um, here in the U.S. So you guys have it a little easier, I believe, there in Europe um, with your you know just having to worry about the 50 cycles and not the 60 coming from computers that we do in the 5994 coming from video sources, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, We'll try to do some more testing in the uh, upcoming days and weeks, and uh, let you know how that's working with the new, the new Skype stuff. So, um, Mark, did you have anything to add to these, um, to, to these comments about the the Magewell? How much, how much have you played around with? I know that you had it uh, working on a Mac Mini, and it just, uh, it just worked, right? No, I, I had the Magewell cat kind of lent to me by the UK distributor, and it didn't work at all. And I, uh, I was in one of those you know, very rushed days, plugged it in and it didn't work. Now, Stephen, you said that you thought it was a little bit sensitive and sometimes you had to install things in the, in the right order. And I was wondering if that was the, the problem that, uh, that I had with it. Right, so um, I don't know. When I'm using it with a Retina MacBook Pro, the second, generation of, of those um, so it's a couple it's a couple of years old um, or a year and a half old and that has an issue where when I plug it in I will get a distorted picture and I'll get um, sort of random lines sort of out of sync and uh, things will be uh, misplaced um, I was all prepared to, uh, to to send it back as being faulty um, plugged it into actually to my MacBook Air just to see if it worked, which is only USB 2 because it's an older version. Worked fine, be it with the reduced uh, frame rates. So I was all set to uh, to send it back, but I thought I'd send off an email to Magewell um, uh, in in China and sent sent them an email. Was uh, saying you know look this is the issue we've got. I sort of managed to capture a picture of it um, uh, and send it to them. Uh, and waited. At the same time, I rebooted my uh, my MacBook um, from scratch and plugged it all in, and it started working. So I was thinking, ah, what's what's going on? Um, it was fine. Tried it a couple of other times and uh, had the had the issue. Um, closed all the load of programs down, plugged it in, worked fine. I then got an email back from from Majewell, um saying that there was a known issue to do with sort of the compatibility with the um, the the motherboard and the USB um, drivers um, within the MacBook. Whether that's just this version of the MacBook or whether it's widespread, I, I don't know. They didn't go into detail, um, but they said there is a firmware fix for it. The issue being that the firmware fix reduces the available bandwidth down from 350 megabytes a second to uh, 200 and something um, megabytes a second. Uh, so I've gone back to them and said, OK, great, can you send me that? But you can you also let me know what frame rates that limits me to uh, and picture sizes, because this does go up to full 1080p 60 um, uh, frames. So I expect that probably it's going to be fine for everything I need to use it for because I'm only using it for, you know, to 25, 30 frames, whatever Skype's asking it for. So, um, yeah, issue there. I've, I've not had a response back from them yet. I only sent them that email today, but um, uh, hopefully we'll get some some view. And then if that firmware is available, it'll probably be something that um, users will maybe want to try. Um, it, there's no no word as to when that's going to be released publicly, sort of on their website. There's no word or anything on on there for the download. So we'll see. But yeah, there is an issue. But even today, switching it on, I just closed all the programs down, plugged it in, opened the Skype and opened the the other programs, and it worked uh, worked fine without any issue. So a couple of uh, questions in the chat room. People are saying, why not use the Blackmagic Device Ultra Studio Mini Recorder? Well, that's what we used to do. They no longer work in the latest versions of Skype, and Skype is uh, switching off, sunsetting those versions, so you have to use the latest version. So that's why we're talking uh, about uh, this uh, Magewell um, device. So I wanted, well, Mark, uh, yeah. sorry, just to, to um, cut in there. 
that was the reason I bought the Magewell was that I couldn't get the Blackmagic devices to work in the recent versions of Skype. Right. Yeah. Until I got the Blackmagic, the Magewell device, and as of in the last couple of weeks, the Blackmagic Ultra Studio 4K. I've not tried the mini recorder. The 4K is working and being picked up correctly. Now I don't know whether that's Skype have fixed something, Blackmagic have fixed something in their drivers, but that is working and i sent you a picture earlier that was coming through the ultra studio 4k um and it was working but uh i think that the issue with the black magic stuff is that it's more temperamental because of the fact that there are intermediate drivers and it's not using that native webcam class so this magwell device should work better because for all intents and purposes skype just thinks it's a webcam but who knows how that will progress in the future Okay, now uh, there's one thing that people should realize is when you first do it, the Magewell has this thing where it squashes the picture. Now I think if you switch your cameras, can we actually demonstrate that, uh, Stephen? Or, uh, um, or we, So let's see let's... whether this works. So I'm going to try, we did this earlier, it didn't seem to uh, cause any problems. So I'm gonna to switch to the black magic output. So you should now be receiving right, me we're... over uh, the black magic no, we're just waiting Device. because the, the holding screen has uh, has come up. So we'll uh, right. we'll see this. Obviously, now we're using Skype TX. It has some more sophisticated uh, bits and pieces. Yeah. So I'm sending you the Black Magic device now, and it's sending you a square cropped picture. Um, which I don't we're, know if you're which we're not that which yet. we're not seeing at the moment. So uh, it looks like okay. we have lost. The, um, uh, it says so, it says so, video not. So this did Video not started, it says. Right, okay, so this that might be that the Skype TX has got an issue, but it did work on your standard version of Skype. Yeah. Um, so let me switch back to the uh, the other one and see there if we, you there get we are. That. So there we go. This yeah, is, so, yeah, so, so it's just, it's just it's sexy. So that's what happens first when you come up. So Major yes. uh, squashes it, and people might, if they're not patient, they're going to think, oh, it's not working properly. And also if you've got bandwidth issues, so... Um, you're going to have go. that issue if you stay in standard definition. Obviously, as soon as it's got enough bandwidth to jump up to HD, it's going to send you the, the right aspect ratio. So um, that's just, you know, the nature of the device has not got cropping. It's just going to squash the, the image to the, the aspect ratio, and you'd be expected to stretch it out at the other in the capture stage. Um, but, yeah, that is a, a nuance of it if you've got low bandwidth. So that's well worth people understanding that. So if they see that, just give it 20 seconds, 30 seconds. As long as you've got the bandwidth, it should pop to, uh, to 16.9. So that's the Magewell is one, one solution. And the other solution that we, that we used earlier is the Black Mag Magic Ultra Studio 4K, did you say? Yeah, so the Ultra Studio 4K was uh, what was using what we tried to switch to just, uh, just then, but that uh, obviously didn't work there be with tx maybe that if we started the call with it it'd be uh, be all right we'll have to try that but it certainly worked earlier with your um, mac mini uh, or sort of whatever imac or whatever it was that mac you mini, were yeah. receiving mac mini so um yeah and the issue that i'd had before is that it wouldn't jump up to hd um it would only stay in the square um sd uh 480 lines um video obviously now it's jumped up to 720 so that that was working when we tried it earlier but i think it's it's one of those ones where the black magic continues to be temperamental perhaps it's working a bit better than it was um but uh, at least it might be squashing perhaps some of the conspiracy theories that skype would actively be doing something wrong um having done a lot of work with the black magic drivers and the video encoding particularly on the mac um uh on some projects that uh, that they've been working on there are some particular nuances to the way that it works particularly with frame rates and what it's asking for and what it's getting and i suspect it's probably that they're not testing their code specifically for those use cases which is something that you wouldn't expect them to do because there are nuances to the fact that you know the television studio um is a fixed output you know we're, we're talking about fixed frame rates it's not just going to switch on the fly to whatever the drivers are asking for so um yeah so th there are some issues there i think it's probably just more to do with uh, with that than anything 
I'm just checking the uh, Sk Skype uh, TX uh, info here, and it does say, yeah, we're getting, we are getting 1280 by 720, so it is a full, um, you know, uh, HD, or not full HD, an HD picture, 1280 by 720p picture from you. And uh, it's, uh, it's handling it well. So there are then potentially a couple of solutions. I think the Magewell might be the, uh, the obvious one. Again, people in the chat room have been saying WebRTC. Well, WebRTC is something to, uh, to look at, but we have not yet seen a really reliable solution. Vance and I, where was it, Vance? We did try WebRTC. It probably, to be fair, it probably was six months, nine months ago, maybe even a year ago. And uh, it was not deli delivering the, uh, the quality or the latency that, uh, that we needed. Well, the latency was okay, Mark, and the audio was fine. The video is still, um, they're still kind of working some of the details out. But I, I do believe that the uh, WebRTC is going to be the, the next, uh, you know, train coming down the, the track for sure. Um, we got a couple links there with some experiments going on in the, uh, in the chat room. So, um, you know, it, 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 the whole Skype thing without getting on top of a soapbox and, and talking about it, it's... Uh, you know, it, it, I think it's to a lot of folks, it's frustrating. You know, Mark, think about the average consumer that would go out and buy um, either hundreds of dollars or pounds worth of equipment uh, to, to get a task done and, and everything works fine. And then all of a sudden, um, just, uh, you know, one Tuesday afternoon uh, or, or Friday afternoon or something, you know, there's, a, there's an update and things don't work the way they did before. And, you know, we've been through many years, at least two and a half, three years of, uh, of problem solving this issue to try to get to the end game of, of using Skype. And I'm, I'm really glad that the Magewell uh, is, is continuing to work. And there's some other folks, there's a, there was a Dazzle comment in the, uh, in the chat room, which I, I kind of chuckled at because Dazzle was a great, great capture device. It was just standard, uh, standard definition and, and, you know, works, works great for a number of folks. But, um, you know, deep down inside, I, I just question some of the decisions that, uh, you know, let's just chop every, everyone's uh, different versions off and, uh, you know, uh, scramble to make, th make things work. I, I really think, Mark, just personally, that it would push the web RD RTC development and other technologies to find a way um, not to circumvent, but just to find a better, uh, a better wheel to roll, if you will. Um, so that's just kind of with, without, without giving my long winded opinion that I normally do. I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm a little, um, I'm just a little disappointed. I'll be honest with you. I really am. Yeah. I mean, I can understand that. I mean, it does seem, especially when the Skype tick systems aren't generally available, it does seem a little bit changed, but I have to say, apart from an issue we had today with Skype text, which was just a Microsoft update. So when we applied all the updates, everything worked. The Skype tech systems, they just work, which is, I think is your point, Vance, is you want something to, to just work. And what we were having to do with, uh, with Skype, as, as you know, I mean, you know, when we got your systems working, you're, you know, we, you never turn them off because, you, you know, if things weren't powered up in the right order, et cetera, you know, there was, uh, there was a problem. But there is, uh, be interesting to, to see how Skype, uh, you know, develops how, and how Skype tech develops. And maybe they'll have something interesting to say at uh, IBC. We will uh, we'll we'll wait and see. So, I think uh, I want to I want to thank uh, Stephen for uh, uh, for for joining us and taking us through those uh, those options. And perhaps Stephen, I can ask you just one last question. And this is we didn't I didn't mention this earlier. Is uh, I know that a lot of people are waiting for version 1.1 of the Studio Tech uh, TV app. Uh, I think it's been submitted. Has it or, or are we still waiting to hear back from Apple? It was submitted um, last Monday. Uh, it's usually about a week for the um, app to go into uh, review. I'm just checking my phone. No, we've not got any notifications to say it's gone into review. I suspect uh, some of the guys at Apple are probably a little bit uh, busy watching a uh, video to, um, to, to be reviewing apps. Um, it should be any day. So um, I don't know when it's going to... Uh, go into review but usually once it goes into review it's sort of live within a couple of hours so um hopefully in the next day or so we should get that pushed out to to the users and they'll see an update and that will uh, add the mp3 download functionality and um a few other bug fixes and some of the stuff that you demoed uh, uh a few weeks ago but uh, yeah it's with apple we're just waiting for them to sign it off and then uh, 
uh, should see it in the App Store. All right, great. Anyway, Stephen, thanks very much for, uh, for joining. And no doubt you'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you again soon when we're talking about uh, Skype or other, uh, other interesting developments in that area. Or when, we're, again, we're talking about uh, our back-end systems. In fact, Stephen and I are sort of talking about a secret project, which we hope it won't be too long before we can, uh, we can discuss with the uh, wider audience. So, so Stephen, thanks again, and, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Oh, thank you for having me, and uh, it's great to uh, you know bring some information and be able to test this for the for the viewers. So uh, thank you very much. All right, thanks to uh, Stephen Preston. You can find him at Vision Maker UK. All right, so um, we've mentioned and we sort of this event that was happening in Cupertino. So Vance was watching it avidly. Uh, so. I, Without going into all the details, uh, Vance, and perhaps focusing more on the on the video related things, was anything interesting uh, announced today by Apple? Well, they're still finishing it up, I think, with uh, some rock band or something called U2. I, I don't know. They must not have been doing anything today. So uh, they're on stage or something. But anyway, so yeah, really quickly, I mean, you know, we, everyone knows that we're somewhat, uh, some folks would call us Apple fanboys. Um, we, in, we enjoy the whole um, ecosystem of, of Apple just because uh, um, unlike some things in the Microsoft world and you know we talked about Skype and some Microsoft updates that just made things stop working and on and on and on. We get we do get some of that on the Apple side but um, there are a number of things that frustrate people but work. Anyway, um, so the keynote today released two new iPhones and, um, and also an iWatch that has all kinds of sensors in it. Um, you know, touch touch sensors. Um, on the video side, the larger one, which is the iPhone 6 Plus, has uh, some some pretty neat video options with stabilization of the camera. Um, you know, they're essentially in the keynote. They says, "Oh, you can take your parents' uh, camcorder and throw it out the window." The interesting thing, I don't know exactly which one it was. I I caught it just in a flash as we were setting up for the show. Was it looked to be a pretty new? version of a, of a consumer prosumer consumer camcorder it wasn't a piece of junk um, that may have had a VHS tape or Sony Betamax or something that would have been uh, you know 30 40 years old it was uh, it, it was not that old of a camcorder so obviously a lot of folks are using cellular phones as their primary selfie camera their picture taking camera their video camera so there's some slow-mo stuff coming out now 120 frames 240 frames which I, I tend to like the 240 frames better um, high definition screen on the large one so now you're going to a full 1080p on the uh, iPhone 6 plus um, availability I'm assuming worldwide looks like pre-order is going to be uh, this coming Friday so that'll be uh, the 12th, I believe. And then in stores on the 17th, one week later. Prices uh, vary all over the place. Um, but now there's a 128 uh, version mark that has not been available before with uh, the, the 6 Plus. Uh, I think it comes with a new pair of trousers that have uh, super wide pockets that are really, really deep. So um, you might have to order those in different colors, maybe khaki or navy blue or something when you uh, when you get those uh, those new um, those new uh, pants to hold the six plus. Since uh, seeing them side by side, it is certainly uh, what they're calling phablets. Uh, but you know they may cut into some of the uh, in the in the computers. You know you can do a lot of stuff on mobile phones now. They're super fast and take good pictures and good videos. So I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. So Mark, I, I think on Friday you're probably going to go ahead and place your order um, midnight Eastern Standard. Um, you'll be up bright and early there in the UK to um, to place your order, right? Anything that has a uh, a bigger screen. He said, having pressed his mute button, um, as I get older, is nothing but a, uh, a good thing. Now, in fact, with my iPhone the other day, I was somewhere quite interesting and I was going to take a picture and I got the camera out and I went and I pressed the button and it came up and said, uh, cam uh, phone memory full. And I've only got a 32 gig and I, I never thought I would fill 32 gig. So maybe the, uh, the 64, even the 128 is the thing to do, especially if you're taking 240 frames per second uh, video, that is going to be uh, uh, something to, uh, to see. So 
We'll find out and no doubt we'll have one to, uh, to share with everybody either here or more likely in the US studio in the next, uh, in the next few weeks. You know, Mark, real quick, I want to jump in real quick. You know, one thing I, I did not see that I have seen some can, uh, cell phone manufacturers do, and this does relate to what we do in video every day, is, um, let's see here if I can find my phone. Um, huh, find my phone. How many people do you see take video with, with it in landscape mode, with it up vertically like this? Does that just, for some reason, you know, and I know this is not a, a, a complete Vance complain day, but, um, <laughs> you, you know, if you see, I don't know if they do it on the, I don't know if they do it on the BBC or not, but, uh, you know, you see these videos and, and, the, and they're really tall and really skinny and then they blur and fuzz out the sides. So what I want, and there are some cameras that do this, I don't, I mean, some cell phones that do this. If you start taking video, on some of the phones, it actually tells you to turn it sideways. And you want to just have something that just kind of just smacks somebody upside the head and says, your television <laughs> or your viewing device looks like a rectangle that sits like this on the wall, not like this. But, you know, that, that's just kind of a public service. I'm going to do a public service uh, announcement um, uh, advert that says uh, on all videos, please make sure you hold your phone in a horizontal fashion and take the video that way, not this way, so you don't have those gigantic, stupid black bars on the left and right. So back to you, Mark. I'm, I'm with you. In fact, I, I get annoyed when uh, certain members of, uh, of the family take photographs that way because they then want it printed in a nice wide uh, version. And I just say, how? You know, I say, are, are your eyes this way up or are your eyes this way as opposed to that way? But they don't, they don't get it. I mean, you should just be able to, it should just, it should just, either it should come out and thump you on the side of the head or it should just take it the right way. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. So there's, that's, that ends this week's public service broadcast by Studio Tech TV. Okay. All right. Now let's go on to our last <laughs> part of the, uh, of the show. And that is on the Blackmagic Studio camera. And uh, it's still sitting here in the studio. And if we switch to camera three, uh, Peter, you can uh, you can see it. There we are. It might even get into. Oh, I think it probably. I think this camera is on manual focus. So it just shows we didn't uh, we didn't check the uh, the, uh, the the system before we. Uh, there we go. There we go. Right. There we go. So here's the. Uh, I did move it actually. To be fair, here's the uh, the Black Magic uh, Design Studio camera. We have uh, we have shown it before. It has a uh, a nice large uh, screen on the back and buttons. We've got the. Uh, the cover, the sort of the sun visor on it. I'm not going to go through all the controls. We've talked about it uh, before, but what uh, what we have uh, have now done is a uh, is a couple of things. Uh, let's just uh, let it up. There we go. Looks a bit Dalek-like from here, doesn't it? Um, so you can see we've now got to two SDI cables plugged into the side. And see the great colours that we choose in the studio here. SDI cables should never be black. Uh, there should always be a bright colour, we think, here. Anyway, there's, there's two connections. We've got uh, SDI in and SDI out. So SDI out is obvious, but why has it got SDI in? Well, for a couple of reasons. One is that if you have an SDI uh, in and you press the uh, program button, you can actually see whatever is on program. Or in this case, it's not on program. It's just what it's just uh, just vamp. So. Uh, this means that the camera operator can actually see uh, not they can see either what is uh, uh, you know shooting or he can see what's on program. So that's a, a nice little uh, little touch. But it does something else because you're sending it basically a digital feed. It can send program or not program various bits of data to the camera, and that's what the uh, the Black Magic um, ATEM control software. Uh, uses to do various things. So I am now just showing on the laptop here the uh, the, the software. Uh, it doesn't quite fit in the screen on this old uh, MacBook. So it's not the software that's a problem. It's just that this screen is uh, is slightly uh, cropping it on the on the sides. But you can see that I've got camera four selected. But this camera is actually set up to be camera five. And if I was to select camera five now, if we go to camera three, Peter, just so that people can actually look at it. And then if I now in the software select camera five, you'll see that the tally light comes on. So that's an example of data being sent to 
the camera and if I now go back to camera four the tally light turns off and there is also a, uh, a tally light in the in the back at the at the top there so that's another uh, little uh, an interesting thing uh, the gotcha on this if you're ever playing with this particular uh, camera is that you have to tell it you have to tell the camera which camera it is and that's actually in this last setting which is sort of uh, studio settings and you can see here we've got camera number it's set up as camera 5 so it's camera 5 here and it's camera 5 in the control software so if we now switch to the output of this uh, of this camera which is I think on camera 4 you can see there that there's a beautiful shot of uh, one of my favorite mugs but it's not in focus now if we switch back to uh, to me for a second and I'll just talk about uh, before I go I go to the control software in a second so you can now control from the software some of the functions of the camera and one of those is uh, believe it or not is uh, is focus so if we look at the ATEM software control panel here obviously we've got the main switching we've got the media we've got the, the audio tabs but under this uh, this camera oh thank you Peter under this uh, the camera settings you can um, you can see there are very oh, wrong one so there are we're set here on camera five you can go to camera four camera three but when we go to camera five you can see that uh, that it says that it is uh, on air and these are various uh, options that you have for uh, you know uh, for changing the uh, the lift the uh, gamma uh, the gain uh, etc um, you can adjust uh, here you can adjust the um, uh, this is the, the gain you've got uh, shutter speed over on the uh, over on the on the left hand side so there's a whole lot of uh, of options that you uh, you have this is the main sort of con oh I'm using three fingers instead of two fingers this is the main control panel so here we're going camera one camera two camera three camera four if I scroll over you can see camera five and one of these buttons down here is sort of the autofocus uh, button so if we now switch to the camera shot and I press on the autofocus button on the software it has focused the camera and you can now see that the camera is in uh, in focus so that's a uh, a nice uh, neat touch back to the control software and let's have a look at uh, at some other things so we've got the uh, the gain you know is up at 18 dB this lens we've got is a is, I think it's a 3.5 f-stop and it's sort of okay in this light but I've still had to to wind the gain up but if I turn it down to um, let's go to say to 12 let's have a look at the picture and I just go through the gain so you can see the various gain settings so that's zero gain that's a plus 18 yeah, plus uh, plus 12 is, uh, is 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 quite good and back to the control software and if I now hit this uh, button here which goes back to this sort of overall screen we can do things like you know change the saturation the contrast the hue you've got really full control stuff that I really am not an expert in at all but what we often use saturation for is you know taking a picture and turning it into a black and white picture so again if we switch to the camera and I just move the uh, the saturation down you can uh, see that that has not that there was a lot of uh, color in it well here's a uh, here's a little bit of a red there's a red usb uh, dongle at the top there and if i now take the uh, the saturation back up you can uh, you can see the uh, uh, you know the color coming back into uh, coming back into the shot so this uh, the software again back on the uh, the software control panel is you know is pretty interesting would you want to balance all the uh, all the cameras um you know from uh, from this i yeah you could i think it'd be something you'd probably do you know more in uh, in pre-show uh, you know in setup rather than during the show um but having you know we just had the problem with the camera you know a few seconds ago or when we started this segment we hadn't we'd moved the camera and hadn't refocused this means that uh, if you were the the operator another task that they would have to do which 
but you can run multiple versions of this software if you have multiple people. You know, you can go and, uh, and you can change things. Um, so I don't think I'm going to show, you know, many more of the, uh, of the options, but that, you know, that really, um, you know, does, uh, uh, you know, give you an idea. And it's a very clever way of doing it, using that uh, program out fees. Obviously, it's sending out, you know, data with a uh, camera number that you set on the camera. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's actually uh, it's actually pretty uh, pretty neat. Great, great if uh, the camera's remote. If you're in a theatre and you had uh, a camera mounted up in the roof, up in the lights, or back taking a, an overall picture, uh, just that that remote control. So going to it. Yeah. So Vance, I know that's the first time you've uh, you've seen that. We haven't had a chance to uh, to talk about it. But uh, uh, what do you think? Oh, I think it, I think that's uh, you know going to offer some good control over that camera. I don't, you know, I I don't, I don't know if that's going to be in a lot of studios. It may be. Um, I think it's a I think it's a great, um, you know, it's it's embarking a new path in in camera design uh, right from the beginning. Large rear dis display, a lot of control, remote control and accessibility, uh, multiple lens uh, ability. So. Uh, you know, I, I like a lot of the things that camera does. I like the size of it. Um, portability may be a little bit of an issue, but, um, you know, how many um, firmware updates have as a camera gotten since we saw it uh, released, Mark? Do you know? We've got a, got a few changes and upgrades, and the, the software is similar, but I believe they've, they've done a uh, few upgrades on that as well, right? Yeah, they have. There was a major release uh, about a month ago, I think just as just as we got it with all this, um, you know, camera control unit, CCU um, software in for the you know the ATEM software, and, and it, it is, um, you know, it, it, it they really are doing some very clever things. I think the camera itself. What do I think of the camera itself? Um, I, I like a lot of things about it, but I think I get, I'm, I'm waiting for some software updates. I and mean, if we look at the camera, if we go to to, to camera three again, Peter. Um, you know, if I turn around and if I am the, uh, and if I turn off the, uh, the menu display here, so if I'm the camera operator, you know, there is no data on, on here. You know, if I press, you know, the, uh, the iris control to, uh, to, to uh, you know, do an auto iris, nowhere is it coming up and telling me what the iris is. Uh, nowhere is it telling me what the shutter speed is. Nowhere is, you know, if I've got, uh, you know, focus, nowhere is it telling me that I'm focused at, at two meters or, uh, or three meters. So if you want to do a... You know, Does it do that with the, meet, with the uh, menu overlay, Mark? I know that's in the way of the screenshot, but I'm just curious if it, if it does those things right, well, only, right there. Okay, now only, if you hit the iris, what happens? Yeah, only if, if we... But no, there is no... It does if you change the gain, um, shutter speed, it, it shows here. Um, but it doesn't actually doesn't have, not that I have found, any settings at all that tell you what the aperture is or what the focal length is. Um, oh, I see. You know, so it, and, and I think there should be an option to actually, you know, display this data um, on the screen. If you're, a, if you're used to, a, you know, even a, you know, a cheap handy cam of some sort, you're used to seeing data on the screen. The more you use a camera in manual mode, the more data you want to be able to, uh, uh, to see. Now, having said that, at this, uh, at this price point, you know, it is <laughs> at this, people get annoyed when I say price point. At this price, it is, uh, you know, uh, a, a, an amazing thing, you know, and I can see that uh, in, in a lot of schools or um, you know colleges or simple setup, even in studios like this, it, you know if you had camera operators, that big screen, um, you know would be good. But then you have to put it onto a nice movable dolly, and you're talking you know thousands for that. So are you by saving a few thousand on the camera, you know, is, is, does that make does that make sense? And the the other thing that um, uh, I think on the camera. So going back to the camera, that uh, this screen is. Uh, is great, but um, yeah, there we are. This camera is great, but this screen is uh, is fixed, so you know you can't adjust it. So if you had the camera up high, you can't tilt the screen down. Or if you had the camera down low, you can't uh, you can't tilt it up. Now, again, what do you expect at this price? For this price, what it does is pretty uh, is pretty amazing. So um, I do think that. You know, displaying more information uh, on the uh, on the screen will be good. 
I mean, you could even think a little bit out of the box. Could you, I don't know whether the, uh, the you can support it in the SDI data stream, but could you actually have a, a chat? Could you actually send a, uh, a message saying, you know, operator three, you know, about to do this. Now there has got, uh, has got support uh, on the side, I think for, uh, for talk back. So you could argue that, um, you know, it is, uh, it, it's not going to um, you know, be much of a, uh, again, but there's lots of things that uh, that could be uh, that could be done. Um, so uh, it's uh, it's interesting now. I think Stephen is trying to uh, is trying to show us uh, uh, something. So if we switch his audio back on, and uh, and and Stephen, this is uh, looks like the, uh, the 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 Blackmagic Pocket Camera. Uh, yes, this is the uh, the Pocket Cinema Camera, which. Um... I uh, have just received as part of the special offer that took about two months to deliver because they couldn't make any fast enough. Um, but I was just pointing out that they've been gradually adding this interface at the bottom to the cameras. I think, I don't know if it's on the studio camera yet. If you press the up and down button, it may or may not display it. Um, but they've added it to all of the others. The Blackmagic camera got it in about a week or two weeks ago. Um, and it shows a histogram and audio meters and recording time. So I would presume that um, that, that will be added to the uh, camera um, fairly soon because it went to the production 4K camera first, then it got released to the other cameras. Um, and if it's not there already, then um, I suspect that it, uh, it will be soon on the... Uh, on the studio camera, but they're they're rolling out firmware sort of you know every week now for the cameras, and they've they've said that they are um, just going to release it feature by feature, camera by camera, really frequently rather than um, uh, waiting ages for a load of sort of big updates. Um, so there's new releases sort of every day. Yeah, I, th I think I, we're used to seeing that in uh, in Blackmagic. I mean, they they get the hardware right and then release that, and then the you know the software does tend to uh, catch up a little bit. So hopefully they can you know a lot of this data must be in the camera. So you know displaying it hopefully won't be uh, won't be too much of a uh, of a problem. Um, and you know, being able to turn it on and off. Sometimes you've got an operator who just you know, you're saying just point at the thing. They don't need the information. Um, you know, being able to have you know some sort of re remote control, or as as I think it was Chris Watts, uh, was it Chris uh, Watts says, you know, for uh, you need a remote control of zoom and, and focus, uh, that might take a little little bit more. But again, you know, we have to consider how much this uh, this camera is. Um, and let me just check on the latest uh, price uh, for it because it is you know a uh, very um, you know. Uh, cheap, reasonable, whatever you want to, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, price here we go. Pocket Cinema Studio Camera, nineteen ninety five dollars. So, uh, so there you are. So that's what probably thirteen hundred pounds plus taxes, etc. That is without a uh, that is without a lens. So micro four thirds a lens. It says it has you know talkback and uh, and tally and. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great picture, but that's a very expensive uh, lens they've got on it. So then you've got a $2,000 camera and probably a twenty or $30,000 <laughs> lens on it in, uh, in that case. And I'm not sure. And then you've got rail system. Are people really going to, uh, to use it like that? Maybe, uh, maybe some will. You know, maybe, you know, for training and things like that, it, uh, it'll be a good thing to do. But you've got a, you know, in this picture, you've got an expensive lens, you've got an expensive dolly that it's set on. You've got, you have got remote control of the, uh, the lenses there. Um, I'll have to check and see whether that's actually supported or that might, I think that's actually straight into the lens. I think the, the lens control there is, uh, uh, is not by the camera, is actually straight onto, uh, straight onto the lens. So, um, it is, it, it is a, um, you know, it is their first sort of studio camera release. And I think as, as Stephen has said, we're probably going to, uh, we're probably going to see, uh, see more. Um, but for the one, for the one man uh, band or the small band where you don't have camera operators, you know, it probably isn't the, uh, isn't the best. Uh, uh, Vance, I mean, you would, uh, I, I guess you know you're ha very happy with your things like XA25s, etc. And there'd be no advantage in your setup for something like this. 
Well, I mean, I guess, you know, you could argue that for the 2000 US dollars that it's a good investment, but you're right, the, you know, the lens, someone's asking in the chat room, you know, how many lenses do you have for that camera, you know, and I think that's just the, uh, the, the, the test model, I believe, um, and maybe not a whole lot of options. And, you know, you could probably build that camera to be very, very expensive or keep it kind of inexpensive, but it certainly wouldn't look like the photos that they show there on the on the website but um you know the xa25 the xa10 even the cameras that you guys are using there and have now for what mark coming up on two years maybe three a little years. more three the years, cameras yeah. you've got there three years right three years right um you know you don't have to get the the, the super super high-end stuff in, unless you are having you know a proper studio set up which we do have uh, viewers that you know have proper studios and they may want to come down to multiple or overhead cameras or different cameras or or these set up to replace some older studio cameras so i think that would work um so you know we get kind of accused of going way 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 high up in uh, you know price and product offerings and then you know when we talk about xa10s then other folks you know may say something to us about oh that's just a toy but uh, i think the end the end game here mark is that uh you want to get high quality high definition content out to your viewers and whatever fits your budget and your abilities in your studio then go out and buy it that's that's what i'd say and i think that is uh, very good advice I mean, for a studio camera, you know, if you want people standing behind it, um, you know, at, at the price, uh, you know, it is, it is difficult to, to beat. And, you know, we're probably all being, un or I'm perhaps being unfair comparing it to a, uh, a camera that is, I don't know, uh, you know, probably 10 times its price or 15 times its price or 20 times its price. So I think, it, it, I think we are going to see a lot of them about, and I'm sure they are, uh, they are selling uh, lots of. I know several people have said that they've actually seen them in use at, a, at event coverage, with uh, with camera operators. So uh, I think uh, you know we'll hopefully see some of the software upgrades, which will fix a lot of the little niggles I have, and uh, will uh, people will uh, will create great video with them. Right. So that's it. We've only only just over the hour and five hour and, hour and ten minutes. So. That's not bad for us. We've uh, we've done very well to uh, to fit everything uh, in. So I'm going to uh, wish everybody a uh, a a good day and uh, hand it over to Vance to wrap things up. And uh, we we'll look forward to I look forward to seeing you next week. So uh, Vance, you can uh, close it down. Exactly, Mark. So you said earlier to please follow us at Vance Willis is me on Twitter. And Mark is at TTFN TV on Twitter. Um, we get some comments, some notes, some uh, direct messages, et cetera, uh, throughout the week, and, uh, and also some product announcements. So please do that. Continue to send us your uh, setups, either by still photography or video. We'll take any or all of those as well. We'd like to share those. We've done a number of those in the last few weeks and really enjoy doing that. Um, please subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, which is Studio Tech uh, TV. Our website is studiotech.tv. Join us in the chat room each week if you can. On Tuesdays, we're live 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. UK, and 2000 CET. So as Mark said, until next week, we will see you guys um, here again very soon. Have a great day.